In number 57, we want to find the critical points of the function f of x equals 2 to the x sine x on the interval negative 2 to 6. And then we want to find the absolute extrema of the function uh, on that interval. Okay, so same process that we've been through before. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the derivative of this function and set it equal to 0 and see what our critical points are. So let's take the derivative of f of x equals 2 to the x sine x. Uh, so f prime of x would be equal to, this is a product of two functions, so we need to use the product rule. So it's the first guy, 2 to the x, times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x, plus the second guy, sine of x, times the derivative of the first guy, which is 2 to the x, times ln of 2. Okay, so here is our uh, derivative. And what I want to do is you notice that there's a 2 to the x in both cases, in both of these terms. So let's factor that out, and I get f prime of x is equal to 2 to the x times <coughs> cosine x plus sine x times ln 2. Okay, and what I'm interested in is where is this thing equal to 0, all right? So I want to set it equal to 0, but notice that for this thing to be equal to 0, one of two things has to be true. Either 2 to the x is 0, or cosine plus sine times ln of 2 is equal to 0. Now, uh, there's nowhere where uh, 2 to the x is equal to 0, all right? So 2 to the x is an exponential function. Exponential functions are never equal to 0. So we don't have to worry about 2 to the x being equal to 0. We just have to worry about this guy being equal to 0. So what I'll do is I will write that 0 then would have to be equal to cosine of x plus sine x times the natural log of 2. All right, so what we have here is that negative cosine of x is equal to sine x um, times ln of 2. Um, then I could, uh, let's see, I could divide both sides by cosine, and I get that minus 1 is equal to um, sine x over cosine x times ln 2. In other words, negative 1 over ln of 2 is equal to tangent of x, and x would have to be equal to tan inverse of uh, negative 1 over ln of 2. Plug things in here. Uh, this is not something that should be intuitively obvious to you, what tan inverse of negative 1 over ln of 2 is. So let's pull out the calculator. Uh, and see what that is. So I do that and I get that x is approximately uh, negative 0.965, let's call it. Okay, so I really have three things that I need to test here. I have a critical point, so this is my critical point, and I have two endpoints being negative 2 and 6, which I need to test. Okay, and I need to test those in the original function. So let's go back over here. And I have three things I want to put into the function. The first one is an endpoint, negative 2. The second is my critical point, which is negative 0.965. And the third is 6. 
Okay. Uh, two of these I can maybe deal with. Uh, actually, all of them are sort of hard because of that sign. So let's just see what we're going to be plugging in here. We'll plug in negative 2, and I get 2 to the negative 2 times sine of negative 2. Here I get 2 to the negative 0.965 times sine of negative 0.965. And then finally I get 2 to the 6th times sine of 6. Okay. All three of these, I need to use a calculator to find the answer. So uh, let's do that real quick. All right, I plug these into my calculator quickly, and I got uh, for f of negative 2, I get negative 0.227. For f of negative 0.965, I got negative 0.421. And for f of 6, I got negative 17.88. So now we just need to ask the question, okay, which of these is the biggest? Which of these is the smallest? The biggest one is here, negative 0.227. And the smallest one is right here, negative 17.88. So we've got our absolute maximum, and we've got our absolute minimum. We just need to write this down. So we have uh, that f has an absolute um, maximum of uh, about negative 0.227 at x is equal to negative 2. And f has an absolute minimum of approximately negative 17.88 at x is equal to 6. And so we've got our absolute maximum and we've got our absolute minimum.